So it's day 34, we're over a third of the way through this course, you've done really well. But we're going to look today at the way lists can be iterated through with loops and a few little cheats as to how we can access or change data in them. So I've shown you the for loop for printing and it's okay, it does the job. Let's see if we can start by building a pretty print subroutine. Pretty printing is a thing. When we've got lists of data, being able to print it out in nice ways is something that we need to do regularly. Therefore, pretty print subroutines are things that actually exist. I've written a program here to allow Spammer Incorporated to spam you. Maybe not the nicest program to be writing, but it's an actual use case. Storing a list of emails that we would then send emails to seems sensible. What I've done to start is importing the libraries I wanted, then create my blank list as almost the first thing that the program actually does. I've then got a wild true loop with a menu that's asking if they want to add email, remove email, show emails, or get spamming. First of all, if the user presses one, we're gonna let them enter the email and add them to the list as we've done before. If they press two, we're gonna let, let them enter the email and remove it from the list as we've done before. We, right at the end, will pause it for a second and clear the screen so it always runs. Let's see how that looks at the moment. So I'm gonna say add email. Notice it pauses for a second before resetting and that looks quite good actually, doesn't it, as, a, as an interface. And I can remove it. What I haven't done yet is printed that out. And that's because the last time we wrote a print function, we wrote a boring print function. So let's write a pretty print function. So why do we need a subroutine for pretty printing? Well, the thing is, if you're printing out a list, you need at least two lines of code every single time. And that can look a bit messy when you're writing a large program with lots of indents. More so, there's a problem. If you want to do anything nice to that formatting, if you want to use F strings, if you want to use if statements to change colors, or to only print out certain things, that's a lot of code to stick in one place, and it's a lot of code to copy and paste. If you're copying and pasting code and you're not changing it in any way, that's a good place to put a subroutine. Because that means if you need to change it, for instance, colors are changing or variables are changing, you only need to change it in one place, saving yourself a bunch of time. I'm going to go into my subroutine and create pretty print. Now, let's start by clearing the screen because it'd be really nice to have everything at the top. So I'm going to do os.system clear. I'm then going to use my for loop. I'm going to print out the title of the array. I'm then going to print a blank line and then use my for loop access each one of those. Right at the end, we're going to pause for a second and then return to the main program. Now, one of the things I can do, of course, is I can put a number next to each email. And there's a very simple way to do this. Create a variable change the print to use f strings so it's going to print out the number in the counter a colon and then the email address inside the for loop i'm going to do counter plus equals one which adds one to the counter each time this should print that entire thing out but i still haven't called my subroutine yet so at the bottom i'm going to add another elif to my bunch of if statements here. If you're wondering why the integers are in quotes, it's because I haven't cast the integers or the input as numbers, just left them as text. I've done that because I'm not doing any math with them, so there doesn't seem to be much point in doing that casting process. I'm just going to call pretty print here and leave it at that. Now let's see what difference I've made with my code. So I'm going to add an email. And another one. And another one. Now 
Now, let's see what that looks like. Now that worked really well, didn't it? it? Popped up on the screen for us for a few seconds and showed everything off. We can, of course, go and use our color code to make that a little bit better if we wanted. Why don't you go and write a pretty print function for yourself? Make sure your list prints out nicely, even enumerate the list if you can. Now we can also use loops in a slightly different way to access elements in an array. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna change for email in list of email. And the way that currently works is it creates a variable called email, sets it equal to the first value and moves down as we go. We could also use the for loop to actually use the index. And that could be necessary for other reasons. In this case, I'm going to change the loop now to say for index in len brackets list of email. Now len is a function that counts how many items are in a list. It's also usable on strings, which we'll look at in a couple of lessons time. But in this case, what this is doing is it's starting our index variable at zero and keeping going for the maximum size of the list. This time we don't need a separate counter variable because we are counting with index. We do need to be able to access email in a different way. Now this means that we're gonna use the actual list itself and use the square bracket syntax to access the index. And notice this time I'm not manually typing a number into that box, I'm just typing the variable name. So index is gonna start off at zero, it's gonna go through the entire code in the loop at zero and then hit back to the top, increment by one, so it becomes one, and do the code again. And it's gonna keep doing that until it gets the maximum size of the array. So I'm gonna add an email, add another one, and one more, and then show the email. And there we go. But note that the number is actually now the index rather than the counting value. But this is quite good because what we can do with that is now we know the index, we can only print out certain numbers, or we could print out certain ranges. For instance, we could ask it just to print out the first 20,000 email addresses, and that would be much easier for us to control with far fewer variables. Try that one out. Now, I won't lie to you, you'll use this one very irregularly. This is the more traditional way of accessing what would have been called arrays rather than lists. But it's worth knowing because some programming questions will require you to access items by their index value. Common problems here are this. If I run this program, add an email address, even just one, and then try and show this, we're gonna get a crash. Now, the crash is very obfuscated. It doesn't really make a lot of sense what the problem is, but the problem is very simple. The way we've constructed the for loop, in this case, to go through the index is strange because a for loop requires a range function to make that list of numbers. We've just said for index in len list of email. Now what that means is we've literally said for index in one. Try that as a loop. For index in one, it'll give you the same crashing error message. What we're missing then is this range function here and making sure that the brackets then encompass the next argument, which is len the list of email. Remember the way that the computer works this out is in order of operations and it does brackets first. So the first thing it's gonna do is the brackets on range, which in there is len list of email. So do that first. Then it'll work at range with whatever len list of email has turned into and then create that list of numbers. I've provided you with an index based piece of code that has a few problems, especially in the pretty print subroutine. Try and fix it for me if you can. Your challenge today is going to be to extend the program we've already written. I'd like you to add option four to the menu, which is get spamming. And what I'd like you to do is print out the first 10 email addresses with a custom email addressed to each of those persons. Now, please remember that I only want the first 10 emails to be printed out on the screen. Ideally, I'd like one printed at the time, pause for a second, 
and the entire screen to clear before the next one is printed. This should give the spammer plenty of time to copy and paste that into an email program. There is a better way, don't worry. I'll be showing you it in a few more days. Once you're done, please share your embarrassing spam program with us in the community by publishing it and by sharing it with the hashtag replit 100 days of code, where we can take a look and judge for ourselves how bad of a spammer you've become. Tomorrow is the first list project and you're going to be building something really, really useful. Thank <music> you.